Ming, I would like to welcome everybody to the Human Relations Commission's meeting. Um, this is a regular meeting, October 14th, 2021. Um, staff, can we please do roll call? Commissioner Everly? Here. Commissioner okay. Kraus? Here. Commissioner Regeer? Here. Commissioner Savage? Here. Chair Smith? Present. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any agenda changes or requests or deletions? Hearing none, we'll move on. To, at this time, we are on to oral communications. Um, oral communications from the public will deal with any item that has not been agendized. Do we have anybody that would like to do oral communication at this time? Yes? We have... Um, one hand up, so I will call on that person once Mary gets the clock up. Okay. Good evening, Aram. You have um, two minutes. Go ahead, please. Okay, so uh, just to report back to the council, I, uh, Greg uh, Tanaka from the city council was kind enough to meet me uh, for a half an hour or so on his uh, Sunday meeting time. We went over uh, my, my position that standalone hate speech in this country is absolutely not prohibited. We went over a lot of examples. I read to him from a couple of First Amendment books that uh, Anthony Lewis has written. I don't know whether I changed his mind. I'm gonna continue to hound him. Uh, and I'm gonna also ask you council members, uh, HRC members, not to encourage a waste of uh, city time and money uh, trying to conclude that standalone hate speech is uh, unconstitutional because it's not and that's that's simply a lie if i want to uh, go after and attack vehemently the outrageous apartheid state of uh, israel as an example uh even if i wanted to be and i'm not uh, i was a holocaust denier that would not be illegal in the united states in europe yeah you're going to go to jail for that so we had that conversation uh, i'm hopeful that you all can encourage him uh to drop that uh, waste of time and and, and just not a, a, a encourage him anymore. Secondly, I'd like to say I was advised that after uh, Officer Sergeant Adrian Moore retired a few weeks back, we now have, guess what, zero police officers, Black police officers, African-American officers in Palo Alto, while at the same time, four or five white officers have filed what I believe is a ludicrous, frivolous lawsuit over the Black Lives <laughs> Uh, matter of mural. So we are living in an upside down reality in Palo Alto. We don't want to pat ourselves on the back, but we've got a, for instance, uh, you know, a, a white supremacist community, a Zionist supremacist community. Uh, we can, we got, we got a lot of work if we're going to have any fairness uh, in this community. That's for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Chair, there, there are no other hands up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to move on to our first agenda item. As we've, as we've known um, since um, our chair, our vice chair, um, Val, I was about to use a church name, um, Valerie Stinger stepped down. I, we have not had a, a, a vice chair. Um, I asked for your for your consideration of us holding off because of a five person committee having two people not know people on the commission. It's, it's just very challenging. Um, so right now we are going, wait, yes, yes. So, so there there to, still uh, is approval of minutes. Approval of minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Have you all dutifully read your minutes? And can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll go ahead. And move. Go ahead. I'll go ahead and I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you I so much. It. Thank you. Um, let us do a roll call vote from the top of the alphabet. Uh, Commissioner Everly. Aye. Commissioner Krause. Michelle, we can't hear you. Yeah, main technical problems, aye. Commissioner Savage. Aye. 
And Commissioner Regeer? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. All right. Thank you so much. Back to back to my well-practiced preamble that <laughs> was at the wrong time. All right. Um, I want to thank the commission for allowing some a period of grace as we figure out um, who our next vice chair process. It was my contention in May June that given that we had two new commissioners, which make up forty percent of our commission, it would take some time for them to get to know us and us to know them in order to have a fair and um, and clear election for vice chair. I also um, this time because we are so close to January. My term will be up in January. Instead of voting somebody in for one month, we're going to ask that um, this term start now, but go till the end of next December, December 2022. Um, staff, I know that there's some rules and different things that have to happen because generally, we do it on paper, but we're not in a paper environment. Um, so how do you want us to run this? Let me just go over the process with you. So the um, process is, is that, well, we can't do the first part because usually the outgoing process is the person who had the position explains what the general duties are. So basically what happens is the chair would open up the nominations for the position of vice chair. Commissioners nominate one commissioner at a time. The person nominated must be present at the meeting and a commissioner can also enter their own name into the nomination. The person offering the nomination can explain why they have nominated the person or why they would be appropriate for the position. The chair then asks the person, are you interested in accepting the nomination? This process will continue of nominating and asking the person if they would like to be nominated until there are no nominations from the floor. At that time, when the nominations, there are no nominations, the chair will ask um, for a motion to close the nominations. After that is seconded, the um, commission then um, will vote verbally to close the nominations and then the chair will call on each person to state their vote. So when we were in person, that was a paper ballot. Since this is in person, you will be asked to make an oral vote. So if it's, if it's one person, you can make a, 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 a vote for that person. You can vote no or you can abstain. An abstain vote goes with the no's. Or if there's two people and you want to choose one of the two, then you state the person that you are voting for. It takes three votes for a nomination to pass. Does anybody have any questions? Um, Commissioner Regeer. I understand that process, but I, I'm, I, I thought you had addressed the issue of picking someone now that would last until a whole year from now, which would make it... Can, can the chair just do something like, can we, don't... It, it's, in, in essence, it's one additional meeting. Yes. That's wait, all. wait, you're saying, but the, you're the, saying, it's, but you're saying in, in, in January, when we pick the chair, the there will not chair, be an election for a vice chair. So well, the chair and the vice chair would end at the same time, but the vice chair would serve um, one month longer. But then that vice chair can't be the chair in January if we wanted that chair. You see what I'm saying? There's a problem. Yeah, you there. certainly could do that. And then you would do a new um, vote for vice chair. There is nothing to prevent you from at that time um, that the vice chair, if nominated, would have the opportunity to um, be considered with all other candidates to be chair. That is certainly possible. And then we'd vote for a vice chair then? Or would of we course, have to wait? If the person, yes. if the person No, because I mean, last time when um, 
Yeah, the this is we- this is a little unusual, but it is not anything that that can't be done. So what we can do if that is a concern is um, we can put the election of both chair and vice chair on the next on the next excuse me on the January. If that's a real concern that um, someone who is elected vice chair would have that interest to be chair, that is that is certainly possible. Or it could be that then on the February agenda you do so. Sometimes little funky things happen, but um, there is nothing to prevent um, what you have just brought as an example. No example, Commissioner. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um... Any other questions? I have a question. So yes. each position, it's a one-year term? Yes, it is. And then if, let's say, Chair Smith, can he then be up for election as a vice chair for the next year or no? He can yeah. be up for election for either. His Again. term, okay. his term, someone can serve multiple terms. There is nothing in the rules that say someone cannot but it, it very well be that the chair can be the vice chair and the vice chair can be the chair nothing in that process is automatic you may be from different cities where they like take turns being the mayor or be on committees where people take turns this is purely as a result of the vote the um, nomination and the vote of the commission so for example um commissioner everly when i came onto the commission um Vice Chair Stinger was actually the chair of the commission. By the time she turned off, she was the vice chair and I was the chair. We had some other stuff in between, but that's what happened. Um, this time, are there any other questions? All right, there are no other questions. <laughs> Can we... Um, I will open up the nominations for the floor. I will make the first nomination. I would like to um, nominate uh, Commissioner Everly. Um, I have I worked with her this summer on his rap, and the work she did was absolutely phenomenal. It was detailed. It was well researched. The questions were thought provoking. She also was willing to stretch her time. Um, she got off of a international flight of six time zones different and still got on the call at 8 a.m. in the morning to do the his rap. So she has the stretch to do the job. Um, I'll entertain any other nominate. Can I get a second on the nomination? I second. Thank you. Do we have any other nominations? Yes, Minka. Yes, there. I, I'm just re-looking at the, the rules. And I think at this point you would ask the, the person if oh, they are okay. interested. Okay, yes. Commissioner we Everly. only do this once a year, so we always have to look at it. Yes, uh, are you interested, Commissioner Everly? Thank you so much, Chair Smith. Um, you've been so kind. Um, I did um, enjoy my time with his rap and I'm looking forward to working. You know, I've just joined the commission, so um, I'm new, but uh, I have enjoyed the work so far. And yes, I'd be interested. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other um, nominations from the floor? Can we nominate ourselves? You can. You certainly can. I would like to nominate myself. Thank you. Can we get a second? I'll second it. All right. Thank you. Um, are you are you willing to do the position, Commissioner Kraus? Uh, I'd be honored to do the position. Thank you. All right. At this at some point, we probably um, need to do oral communications if there are any chair. I would probably think I would ask After you in the nomination. 
that's that's up to you. I would do it after the nominations because I don't think you can do oral communications on elections until you know who the candidates are. Okay. All right. All right. Um, any other nominations? All right. Can we get a vote to close the nomination? I need a first. Somebody. Do you need a yeah. motion? Yeah. Can you I, somebody move, I make a motion to close the nominations. I'll second, second it. it. Okay. We're so efficient. Thank you. So thank you both um, for, for stepping out. Um, we're grateful to have such quality candidates. At this time, I am open for public comment. Thank you. Hey, Mary, if you could get the clock up, please. Great. We have, um, at this point, we have one hand up. Aram, go ahead. You have two minutes. OK, so I'm in sort of an, an unusual position. I supported, and I think he has done a great job. Uh, as chair, uh, Pastor Smith, but as you know from my letters and from my comments, I'm disturbed uh, by the two minute limit. The city council has gone back to three minutes in most situations. So whoever it is that gets to be the vice chair, I hope will uh, uh, kibitz, kibitz the chair to employ some more democracy in these proceedings. It's just really, to me, uh, unconscionable when there's only one speaker to limit the amount of time to one minute. But I have obviously not been convincing. I have not been able to move Pastor Smith even an iota. Um, so I'm hopeful that whoever the vice chair is, is not going to simply rubber stamp, and I know, I know you're not going to. I, I, each one of you have got strong independent views on things, I've seen that. Uh, we'll, again, kibitz the heck out of Pastor Smith to make these meetings more democratic. I would think you all would uh, uh, get tired of just listening to your own voices on the HRC. The mission of the HRC, as you know, is to reach out to the public. And, and you know, I have never seen in any regime uh, maybe that's a misuse of the word, uh, uh, Pastor Smith, but in any event, such poor public participation in the HRC. And I think part of it has been the failure of the chair to rethink his position on this, what I call a very undemocratic way to handle meetings. It's great to hear your voices, folks. Each one of you has, like I said, outstanding things to say, but let the public have the same opportunity to address the critical issues that come before uh, this commission every once a month. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um... are, are there any other comments? No, there are not, Chair. All right, Sam, I will turn over for you to do the vote. Okay, Mary, you can go ahead and do roll call. Okay, I will do it then. Okay, did you you wanted me just to do a regular roll call? You can just do roll call, and then I will I will um, make a note of the. Let me just take one second, and I will I have it written down on my hand. Go ahead, Commissioner Eberly. So do we just vote now? You just state the name of the candidate you are voting for. All right. Well, Adriana Eberly. Commissioner Krause. Oh, you're yeah. muted. This is not the meeting to be technically challenged. Uh, Michelle Krause. Commissioner Regeer. This is a hard one. Can I? Um, what if I um, abstain? 
We would have to see, that would go as just a, a no vote. We would have to see how the votes go to see if we need to do some kind of a recount. I'm staying. Commissioner Savage. Commissioner Everly. Chair Smith. I'm Commissioner Everly. Okay, so we have three votes for Commissioner Everly, one vote for Commissioner Krause, and one abstention. So we do have um, a winner, votes, which is a passing vote for Commissioner Everly. I want, I want to thank everybody um, for participating and putting themselves out. Um, we are grateful that we had two super qualified candidates this time. And we're, and we're excited to have Commissioner Everly work with me for one month. And then we'll see who the next chair is. But um, Commissioner Everly, do you have anything to say? I'm honored to have been nominated and very you know, thankful. And I'm looking forward to working with everybody. And again, happy to be here. And I'm looking to work on lots of things in the next year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we'll move to our next agenda item, um, which is, I believe, the update and report from Commissioner Gear, Commissioner Krause, and the um, and I believe they're going to be looking for us to give them some more um, action. So there will be action. This is an action item, right, Sarah? Chair, this is a this is listed as an action item. If if the 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 commission members on the subcommittee um, had an um, action regarding the the planning of the event that they would like to bring to the commission, yes. All right. So um, I will have both um, Commissioner Regeer and Commissioner Kraus make their presentation. We will do. Um, community time and we'll do, um, sorry, we will do the, um, the public comment and Mr. James has worn me down. We will go to two minutes and 30 seconds as the compromise. So are you going to that first or having the, um, the uh, report I, from the commissioners? I'll, I will have the report from the commissioners first. And then we will go from there. Thank you, Chair. Great. So, um, Michelle, do you want to, you were saying you wanted to lead, but you're on mute. So, so this is regarding- I'm here. <laughs> I'm not having a good time, but I'm here. Uh, Patty, there were two items that we collectively decided to disclose and talk about. The first is um, Commissioner Regera and myself uh, did some discovery research to understand better the zoning parameters of utilization of public church grounds for such uh, utilization what it takes to work on the, within the zoning parameters. And it was very useful. We spoke to former head of planning for the city, uh, Steve uh, Emsley. And I think we have a much better understanding. So we are going to proceed with that and explore the full ramifications. And then the second point is we're gonna look at the other developers that are available um, to take such projects on in terms of their allocation of monies and their past performance. Do you have anything to add to that? Right, and this is based on the survey that that we that um, that um, a group of us sent out to all the faith leaders in the community, and eight responded that they would be interested in pursuing something like this. You know, yes or a maybe. 
So we would contact in, um, in pursuing building something permanent low income housing on their property. So we're, so that's where we're at. And we're not proceeding as since we'll have a formal event, rather we'll proceed with meetings with additional developers and continue to push ahead with the critical zoning issues, um, which have been much simplified for us by Steve Emsley. And I would be happy going forward to develop a written statement uh, about what that entails and not, not disclose that right now. Right. So um, we learned a lot and we're going to see if there are other partnerships available. All right. Thank you so, so much um, for your, for your um, comments. We'll open up for public comment. We'll give each commenter 2.30. Then we will also give each commissioner for their first round of comments 2.30. I'm just hesitating as I, I, I believe Aram has his hand up, but he's not showing up on my, my list of attendees at this moment. So I'm, I've gone back out and in of my list of attendees and it's not showing. Um, Aram, I'm going to um, lower all hands, and then if you wanted to speak, can you can you um, raise it again? Okay, and then I, I your name has showed back up again. Okay. Actually, once your name, once you raise your hand, your name disappears. So can you just um, lower your hand, and then I will just call on you. I am not sure. Actually, Aram, if you could lower your hand and then I will go back in and I think you will just, you're, you will reappear. So if you can lower your hand, please. Okay. Okay, are you able to hear me? Yes, thank you. I'm not sure what's happening. As soon as you raise your hand, you're, you somehow you disappear on my screen. So go ahead, please. You have two and a half minutes. Okay, Mr. Chair, thank you for extending an additional 30 seconds to the public. Um, I was interested in uh, Commissioner Regeer and uh, uh, Krause's, uh, and whether or not, maybe at another meeting you can answer whether SB 9 that applies to, you know, the governor signed the, the bill increasing uh, or doing away with R1 zoning for to end discrimination in housing, but that's gonna also apply to uh, faith communities. Um, so very, uh, I mean, you know, interesting th thought that maybe that could be answered. And um, I also really, really encourage you guys to continue to do whatever you can to get uh, the land at different faith communities to put in permanent housing. I think that's just, an extraordinary opportunity. I, that when I know when I was with Stop the Ban, when the city was trying to prohibit uh, vehicle dwellers from uh, staying in Palo Alto, um, we discovered there were 41 faith communities. So uh, I'm assuming not all of them have sufficient land for permanent housing, but even if we were to get half of those uh, faith communities to put in two or three uh, units of permanent housing, that would be a great thing. So again, I appreciate both of your efforts in this regard, and I look forward to the additional information you'll have in the future on our progress in that regard. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, are there any other hands? There was a hand up earlier and I see it's gone down. So if you want to speak, there you go. Mr. Moore, go ahead, please. You have- um, Reverend minutes. Moore. Reverend Moore, thank you. Go ahead, please, Reverend. Have to remember to unmute myself. It's been a while. <laughs> Being in retirement has been kind of uh, too hard 
only, you know. Uh, greetings, and um, I don't know if this is actually on the subject matter, but I had reached out, tried to reach out to you, Pastor Coloma, to talk to you uh, about a resolution that the NAACP had passed uh, uh, dealing with canines. And if I could, I would just like to read you the therefore clauses, if that's okay. Can we, this is the next agenda item. Can we hold it for that? Okay, next agenda. Yes, I'll hold. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Are there any other um, individuals who would like to address this item? Yeah. Chair, I see no more names. All right, let us, we'll start from the um, top of the alpha, alphabet with questions. First of all, I wanted to thank Commissioners Regeer, Commissioners Krause um, for looking into this and for all the meetings and reaching out to um, the faith-based communities and the city. I just want to clarify something. So there are, you mentioned some critical zoning issues and you guys are going to report back to us on those, right? Okay. Correct. Oh, that's, that's the only clarification that I needed at this point. Thank you. Commissioner Krauss, you get the report. Commissioner Regan, or two, sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Savage. Um, no, no comments, just a uh, good job so far. I'm interested in learning more when you learn more. So I have a, I have just some thoughts. Um, you know, one of the things with the HRC is we try to find our unique niche in situations. Um, have we talked to our fellow commissioners in the planning commission? Um, they might be working on something, especially since the state changed it. Um, and I think we need to really uh, focus very tightly on this religious property um, um, clause of what that looks like. Because I think getting into the tangle of overall zoning is, is, is a very politically fraught subject in, in Palo Alto. But I think if you are very highlighted and focused on something that a the state is backing that people are looking for which is that how do we repurpose certain properties or church properties for this i think that will be good because i don't think well i actually know this we don't have the scope to go into zoning that's a planning and planning commission thing but if we're doing specific work around what happens in these church spaces and what that looks like that's a very different conversation because that, that's not um that's not on their main table, right? So that is my only takeaway from it. So may I respond? Yes, ma'am. Um, the reason um I went to specifically to see is Emsley is that he's an insider in Palo Alto. Uh, he has led the planning department. He's been a city planner. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to take the very precious time mm -hmm. of our department that has shrunk until we were further formalized to go forward. Uh, oh. But he and I have worked just the background on mm -hmm. zoning issues in the past that were very complicated. So I, I, I think you've made the first, so let me be clear. I think your first move was absolutely correct. You spoke to somebody that had institutional knowledge that you had a community relationship. I, I don't doubt, like, so not, not critiquing what you've done. I think you did the right thing. I'm just saying not even staff, but the planning commission, they mm -hmm. might have certain things that are, they're brewing on and just paying them to make sure there's no cross duplication of work or this is not an area. So I agree with your, your current methodology, but I just want to make sure that we aren't trying to cook the same egg that the planning commission is working on. No, no I, totally, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, there's step by step, you know, 
I mean, I think that that is something that I mean, I I do have in the works talking to planning commissioners. I mean, yeah. that was because um, I totally agree, and and even people from the housing element. I think that if we all work together, it's it's the best way to do it. All right. Uh, so I don't think we need to do any extensive motion. I'm going to ask if we could please take a five minute break. Um, and then we'll go on to our final item of the evening. Or is everybody all right with that? Oh, it's great. All right. Thank I'll you. See you. Just to you. remind everybody, if you can ensure that you turn off your cameras and turn off your sound. And if you won't, I, I'm, I'm able to do that. I didn't do a break, a break thing because I didn't think we would do a break. So um, I'm gonna stay on camera so they don't think the meeting's over. And I. That would be 641, Mary? Yes. Okay, thank you.
Um, hopefully, we, Commissioner Klaus can come back on. She's coming. I don't know. I don't see her name on it, so I can I can text her. Okay. Um, so we're we are on our third point for the evening. Um, and I think I need to do some clarification before um, before we move much further. And it would be good to have Commissioner Krauss on as the second liaison. Yes. Can you text her? Fine. I will call, sir. Maybe we'll call that lady tomorrow. So. Um, Chair, she was having some technical issues, so she is attempting to uh, log back on. So she should be um, back there. Okay. So. I just want to clarify some things so everybody's absolutely clear. Um, the HRC's relationship with PD, we have a two-sided relationship. So for example, when they were doing body cams, they came, we had a discussion, we talked, and we helped mold the policy. The second relationship, which we are using tonight, is our late liaisons, because we're an arm of the public, will go and have discussion and dialogue with, with issues and things that are brought up and report back faithfully to the community what was said to them. In this role, um, we don't have the ability to decide policy or go back, but what we are trying to do is equip the public with as much current information as possible. That being said, we do not kill the messenger. We are here to provide the information so that things that are happening in PD can be reported to the public. That's the job of the liaison role, and that's any of our liaison roles. So I'm going to ask Commissioner Savage um, to please provide the report. After that, we will go to public comment. And if there are any thoughts with commissioners, we'll have a quick discussion about that. But again, let us be clear. Part of the HRC's job in our liaison roles with different nonprofits and different city agencies is to report back faithfully to the public, policy manual changes, those things, so people are aware of what's been done. Commissioner Savage. Thank you, Chair. Um, as you are all probably aware, uh, the HRC liaisons meet with the police department a few times a year just to informally discuss the latest developments, uh, what's going on with the department. Uh, Commissioner Krause and I did meet with uh, both Chief Johnson and Chief Binder, um, actually almost three months ago. Um, this information, yeah, is, is not current. It's, it is about three months old, but because of numerous delays in presenting the summary, but here it is, this is what we discussed. Um, first, current crime trends, um, grab and run was the first thing that came up and it was explained that sophisticated crews, organized groups of people run into high-end retailers with big bags 
fill them up quickly and run back to a waiting car, which is usually stolen or a rental. And whatever items are stolen um, are usually fenced a couple hours later, so it's nearly impossible to retrieve um, what has been taken. Uh, we also discussed the homeless issue, and um, Chief Johnson emphasized that he encourages his officers to take a compassionate approach to deal with the homeless. Uh, police officers um, offer services to them and try to provide direction, and being homeless is not a crime. Uh, but officers also have to be aware of public safety in general when dealing with them. Uh, next is vacancies in the police department. Uh, this is a real issue because of recent budget cuts and hiring freezes. Uh, the department has lost 30 positions, 3-0, 30 positions in the last couple of years, uh, including the school resource officers. Uh, some officers retired, other personnel have left for various reasons. So it's been a challenging time for recruiting new people. Um, hiring and retention as well. Uh, the annual budget for Pelta Police was cut 13%, which the dollar amount is $4.3 million. Um, their detective division, for example, went from 12 detectives to eight. Now there are only four detectives in the department. Uh, community outreach. Uh, Chief Johnson is very uh, involved with this. And he said one of the first things he did when he came on board was to create the Chief's Advisory Group. This is made up of about 30 community members who meet monthly. Of course, this past year has been on Zoom. Uh, their main role is to meet with the Chief and make suggestions, recommendations, um, and review policy. Um, all the neighborhoods in Palo Alto are represented by this group, so they really are a real voice in the community, especially when something happens. Um, next is the canine policy. Um, it has recently been revised. Uh, the revisions include using canines to search and apprehend violent felons, which would be a rapist, a murderer, um, or an assault with a deadly weapon, or someone who just poses a threat to public safety. Uh, in addition, the revised policy has stricter controls on when the handler can take the canine off his leash for searches and when and how announcements are given prior to searching an area or residence. Lastly, the revised policy explicitly identifies a canine bite as a use of force and has aligned any use of the canine with the department's revised force policy, also recently revised. Um, Chief Binder noted that often it's the mere presence of a canine alone can facilitate a peaceful surrender of the subject. And that, of course, is the desirable outcome. Um, several, you may remember a hate incident at Fuki Sushi a few months ago. Um, where a diner um, in the restaurant became angry after he was told he could not pay in cash, he could only use a credit card. He proceeded to make a scene. He shouted in the restaurant. Um, he called the restaurant owner un-American, said she should go back to her country. Um, he did eventually pay in cash, but he continued to shout in the restaurant's parking lot. The police were called. They took a report, investigated the incident, and determined that as unfortunate it, as it was, it did not right um raised to the level of a hate crime um, they also involved santa clara county district attorney's office and the da's office came to that same conclusion there was no crime committed and um that that is my summary um you should also know that culture police has a quarterly blog which just came out last week it's written by chief johnson and it's a much more thorough, much more in-depth um, description of what's going on in the department. It includes uh, crime statistics, uh, police reform, the new PERT program, which involves mentally ill individuals, uh, talks about the independent auditor, what, and what the future holds. So um, that information is much more up to date. And um, that's my summary. Um. Thank you so much, Commissioner Savage. Um, you touched on a lot of different pieces there. So thanks for the thoroughness of the report. And we would like to go to public comment. Staff, do we have anybody speaking? I will wait for the clock to come on, Chair, and then I will call the names. Great, so the first um, hand up is Aram James. Aram, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, Commissioner Savage, thanks for that report. A couple of things. The, uh, the advisory commission is not subject to the Brown Act, therefore the public doesn't get to attend them. And that's really wrong. Uh, so 
somebody needs to push the chief to have more transparency in that regard. As far as attempts to tweak an immoral uh, unit of the canine unit, attempts to tweak canine policy to limit the use of canine dogs, canines to certain charges like rape, murder, and other uh, serious felonies, ignores the presumption of innocence. Juries decide guilt or innocent, not police or their brutal, weaponized, and viciously trained canines. It, uh, thanks to, to Lewis Carroll, but he said it better than I did, sentence first, trial later is not the way we're supposed to do justice in this country. I hope some of you read the Marshall series, the 13 part series on dog mauling that shows that across the country, it's an epi epidemic. African-Americans are targeted hugely disproportionately, including in Palo Alto as well over the years. We need to, I would hope that the HRC would recommend to the city council that we ban canine units permanently, except for where they're used as a search and rescue team or except when they're used uh, for bomb sniffing, but not to attack and eat up human body parts. Uh, that's not consistent with the presumption of innocence. So please let, let's end that. Um, also, we've got no transparency. I've, my numbers suggest that we're spending somewhere between a half a million and a million dollars a year on that canine unit. And it's simply immoral also to have these dogs paraded in front of our school children and other community members without telling the truth about the vile history of canines going way back to slavery and even before that, if you which watch part 13, the 10 minute documentary from the, uh, the Thurgood Marshall uh, series or the Marshall series uh, named after, the project was named after Thurgood Marshall. So it's a costly procedure. Uh, it, it, it's, it's something that we really, in a, in a humane society, shouldn't be uh, making a judgment as to guilt or innocence by having these dogs rip apart people, and even kill them, which I'm not exaggerating, that's in the Marshall Report. So let's, let's do something soon now to ban these canines. Let's be leaders in Palo Alto. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to speak? Please raise your hand. Okay, Reverend Moore, you have two and a half minutes. Please go ahead. Reverend Moore? All right, I think I'm unmuted now, right? Oh, that's good. Okay, thank you very much for having me. And again, I'm so glad to be here in Pastor Cloma. I really just enjoy seeing you and hearing your kid in the background. Really just tickles me. But I wanted to make sure everyone understands that we had a, a resolution a year ago uh, that we requested records of all uh, police departments, enforcement agencies, canine policy. And I highly recommend that uh, you guys look for the policy that Palo Alto has for the canine uses. I wanna make sure you understand national or state standard for the use of canine units or a post certification of canine units usage. Also, as part of the use of force report, their canine unit statistics. This should include all statistics of the number of bites, the extent of the injuries, the cost of hospitalization, and the race of those bitten by the canine units. Finally, we <laughs> believe that ban banning canine units altogether, except for search, rescue, bomb disclosure, and other non-apprehensive reasons would be very good use of force, um, not to use police dogs. And, and again, just historically, uh, uh, how police dogs have been used on communities of color, and particularly for riot control and on youth and demonstrations that often started out peacefully, but were escalated by the presence of these animals. Uh, again, the, uh, we had this um, resolution a year ago uh, uh, for all police departments to make that report. And I would hope the Human Rights Commission of Palo Alto would follow through and ask for these statistics and get the numbers from your department so you would know. Again, thank you for having me, Pastor Coloma. Next time in town, I'll try to catch up with you. But they were bouncing me from Las Vegas to Northern California and all points in between. God bless and stay strong. Thank you, Reverend Smith. I mean, thank Reverend you. Moore. If, 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 um, so everybody's clear. Um, Pastor Jeff Moore is a legend in Silicon Valley. He was the chair of the NAACP for almost a decade. He is 
a wise and sage man, but he has retired, so he's moved out of town. But he felt this issue was important enough to have us a moment on. So thank you, uh, Reverend Moore. And thank you, um, Mr. James. We will start from the top of the alphabet with commissioner um, comments, and then we'll go from there. Well, first of all, I wanna thank both Commissioner Savage and Commissioner Krause for having the meeting and clearly writing some very detailed notes. I feel like the bar is very high now. I don't know if I could do such a detailed report myself. Um, you've touched on so many things. I'm unclear and, and maybe this question is for the chair. Because of what you clarified in the beginning before mm -hmm. they gave the report, I'm not positive on what we do from here besides, you know, thank so you. So I, mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have some questions on, um, on hate crime and hate crime response and hate crime statistics. So, um, and because they reported on the hate crime event, I would say Commissioner Savage, in the next conversation with, with the chief, can we get some real detailed local statistics on hate crimes? Or um, like, um, or another example would be, um, Pastor Moore made a request like, what is what is our reporting for a canine unit? He brought up some very good points. And so those are the questions I would ask the liaisons to come back because I feel like those are two good public information pointers that they can really go to the go to PD and answer our questions, but also answer concerns from the from the general public and, okay. fu and fulfill that liaison role. I'm sorry. Okay, I understand now. So so we can now ask questions and then the commissioners can go back to the police department for their next meeting and ask those questions. Yes, okay. and include them in their discussions, yes. Okay, so one thing that I notice is that one of the revisions of the canine policy is that a bite is use of force, okay? Except that they, they didn't say that it was excessive use of force, which for it to be a crime or for the DAs to do anything, it needs to be excessive use of force and it needs to be to the level of great bodily injury. So I'm curious as to what this change actually does to the policy. I believe the announcements was already part of the policy. I'd like some clarification on that. And I guess I wanna know why why do they think, well, and I guess this goes to the chair's statistics question is, to be honest, I'm curious as to how many violent felons they actually apprehend this way. I've seen a lot of great cases in my life and honestly, maybe DNA is one way to get a violent felon, but the dog, the canine unit, I haven't seen too many of those. So I feel like it might be something that it's worth exploring. I'm totally for the use of canine units for search and rescue and bob sniffing. I agree with Reverend Moore. And I'm curious as to how many actual apprehensions and how many contact they have that do not rise to the level of excessive force. Um, what else? The I'm curious as to the SROs I did not know that they ever had SROs in the schools here. So I'm curious as to know when did they, and I'm personally, I guess, against having school resource officers. So I'm curious to know when did that end? Is this something that they're looking to bringing back? I, I find that that's a positive change. Um, and the only, I guess, yeah, I, I guess those are my questions for now. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I believe Commissioner Krauss. You're muted. Oh, I'm a technical problem here in total, but 
I am very grateful for to Commissioner Savage for introducing me to the chief and the assistant chief and really beginning my education at the data that's collected by the police department. So I'm very much the student and I'm happy to help us find the future data. But Commissioner Savage has got years of experience, both in the Palo Alto Police Department, as well as with the FBI. So I will turn to her for her expertise. Thank you. Um, Commissioner McGear. Well, I, I'm just a little confused about this process because, and maybe you can explain it because we didn't really have it last time, is I thought the report was her commissioner's report, just like any, like we all had our commissioner report. And, and, I, and I guess, and we had that discussion because um, Commissioner Savage gave it to Commissioner Krause to read, which, because she wasn't there at our meeting. So I, 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 I guess I'm just confused about why this has become an action item, not an action item, but it seems like, like, like Mountain View, for example, they have a, the police chief or someone from the police department meets once a year so, and um, meets with the commission. So I guess, it just seems like so, he waits to talk about what that happened three months ago. Because last night there was a hate crime. The person was caught, and they did use a dog in Palo Alto for for finding. The, I mean, they apprehended this person when it happened on Sunday. So I I feel like we're kind of slow, but we're also um, I don't know. I'm not making any sense in that regard, but. I'm wondering why it wasn't just given as a report last time and why it's and why it's on here and like to have all these questions to ask the commission the liaisons to go and ask the police chief to come back um couldn't we just do like one mountain view just have the commission have the police chief or someone from the police department once a year meet with us and we could give all these questions and have a dialogue and have you know what I'm saying so, this is unusual so, that we do this way. So I believe, I believe this the chair with two significant trends and two significant things that were in the newspaper, hate crimes and canine units that have significant public interest that I needed to elevate this to an agenda item so it can be discussed and people can have questions. And it's a because part of, I, I believe the mandate of the Human Relations Commission is also to function as an informational body, but also function as a body that can ask questions. I think um, Mr. James and Reverend Moore both made some great points that Commissioner Everly said, let's just ask the question. Um, but I feel like this is, this is a, given those two significant issues in our community, it needed to rise above a regular commission report, like, you know, so that that was my decision as the chair. I don't know if it's the right one, but I felt like it was the one. I, I totally understand that, but we didn't even hear the reports. We had no idea what it said. And 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 if you if someone had read, I mean, what I'm saying is that it seems like couldn't we have this I, I do agree that it's very important, but to have our liaisons meet twice or three times a year. And, and then just report back and then they have to go back to the police chief. It seems like, couldn't we have once, it is an important, it's very important, is elevated to the point that we have the police chief or someone from the police department like Human Relations Commission does in Mountain View and have an open community discussion once a year over these issues? Because by- I'm willing, I, mean, I think that's a discussion. Um, I will, make the invitation to PD. Um, since they don't report to us, they come at invitation. Mm -hmm. So I can make the invitation and it's up to them to come or refuse. But I think it is a valuable, valuable thing. And I think it would do them well because it would give a moment for public discourse to ask questions. So well, thank you. That's a good point because it seems by the time our liaisons go back, ask the question, 
and then we don't meet maybe in December, then it's like three more months that we. Yeah, I got you, I got you, I got you. Um, so. But thank you guys for doing this. Well, thank, and, and I, I wanna say this, I think uh, the liaisons brought back a very thorough report and a very holistic report of uh, the internal conditions in the department policy changes and challenges and crimes that we're having. So I'm, I'm grateful for this report, um, Commissioner Savage. The only, the only thing I would like to add to that report is during our um, research, when we spent a lot of time with PD last summer, they were talking about um, the fact that I think this end of this year or next year, there's going to be the implementation of a more um, analytical data on arrest and ethnicity and um, all of that stuff. How is the rollout of that going? When is that going to come? When do those, when do those most more transparent points meet the, um, meet the, um, the dead, will they meet the deadlines set by the state? Um, because I think that will be super helpful. Um, and also, um, I think Commissioner Everly, uh, Vice, sorry, I should say Commissioner, Vice Chair Everly, uh, made some good points on, she asked all my questions on the canine piece. So um, do we have any other questions for oh, for Lisa? Yes. I would like to ask the question since, um, and I haven't, just, I'm just saying this because I don't know, but, but Aaron James did in his communication say that there's no African-American police officers now in the police force. So I guess I'd like to, to know what is their recruitment policy? Like how are they reaching out and how are they, like what are they doing in, re in regard to that? That's a great question. Great question. All right, do we have any other, do we have any other things we want to, um, Go back to our liaison, liaison, liaison. Okay. All right. I want to thank you all, um, Commissioner Krause and Commissioner um, Savage, for coming back with a really thorough report. I think it really um, allowed us to um, think more on where PD is, and we're grateful for that. All right. Now, um, I would like to um, go to the commissioner reports. Staff, I just want to confirm that's the next agenda item because it went off my screen, so. That is correct. I forgot the minutes, but I remember the commissioner reports. Um, and let us start from the back of the alphabet to some, so I'll, I will start and then we'll go to Commissioner Savage and then we'll go from there. Um, I want to inform everybody that next week, the city of Palo Alto will be doing a, um, we'll be, sorry, I'm pulling up the flyer. We'll be doing community together, recognizing and reporting hate crimes in our community. Um, I will be, a participant in some level on this event, but I want to encourage all of the HRC members to please support this. This is work. You know, we've done work through this entire year um, on hate crimes, and I think this would be just a great way to continue to support because one of the things we highly recommended in our letters to um, the city was education and information and getting it out. And I'm happy to see the city is doing that. So that is next October 20th at 6 p.m. And I wanna encourage everybody to be there. Um, in this past month, um, yesterday, I sat with the FBI um, and, and our representative from Congress and the division gave a phenomenal report on hate crime statistics because they finally have this statistical data from 2020. So they were able to illuminate a lot of trends. Um, I believe we will be get, according to the agents, I believe we will be getting a, a full report shortly for us to review. I'm also tentatively thinking 
um, and I might make this a discussion item, about inviting the FBI to um, speak to us about hate crimes and where they see the trends going and what are some of the strategies and things they're doing along that, along that line. The um, other thing is I'm happy to report that the mayor has signed on to the letter um, that um, I forgot the gentleman's name. What's his name again, Patty? I don't want to say it wrong. Mo Budak. Uh, what? Mo Budak. Mo Budak. I'm sorry. That Mo Budak presented to us in last June. So I'm I'm really excited to report that that was completed, and we're we're moving right along. Next report is Commissioner Savage. Um, no, nothing to report. Well, you did a full report. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Commissioner Regeer. Um, I have we met. No, I mean, I, I'm on one of our issues, mental health, and and I'm on the Project Safety Net liaison, and they're having. Um, we had an interesting um, group discussion of how each agency can work together and and support each other, and 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 one of the things too is that there, because of college um, fairs, they're thinking about doing some more stuff with high school and middle school students around the pressures of that. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's National Bullying Month in October. So anyway, so that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Krause. Hey, um, I don't think I have much else to add after our report about affordable housing and the work that we're beginning. Uh, with the eight um, churches that responded and are open to allotting some of their land for discussion. I'm very grateful to Angie Evans for the fundamental work she did with Commissioner uh, Regeer. Mm -hmm. And you've gotten the information on the police report from Dar Commissioner Darrell Savage. And I too was at the FBI uh, seminar yesterday and know that they will get back to us with comprehensive information. And I think it would be very beneficial for us to have them come and do a session for the HRC in Palo Alto. Thank you so much. Um, Vice Chair. Thank you. I'm sad I missed the FBI meeting. Was it yesterday? Was it yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Four I was stuck in court and I couldn't get out on time. So I'm glad um, Commissioner Krause and Chair Smith were able to go and report back. Thank you for that. Um, I have, I'm on the King Artist Residency Selection Panel representing the HRC, and we have gone proposals from three artists. And next week, there's going to be a public meeting. So part of the meeting is going to be public, and there's going to be a presentation by the artists. And then we're going to vote on who is going to get the residency. So I'm excited about that. And that's going to mm -hmm. be in front of City Hall, eventually the art project. Wow. Yeah. And then the other thing, I this weekend I actually got to go to the Code Art exhibit downtown. I don't know if anybody else went, but it was great to go and see all the artwork and meet the artists and see so many people out downtown, you know, interacting. And it felt like the most joyful downtown post COVID um, experience that I've had so far. So I, I don't. I don't know if it's a Palo Alto art department that put it on or Palo Alto arts. And there's a lot of organizations, but um, I'd like to thank them for it. It was great. So that's all. Thank I, I, was you. So, I was so sad. I didn't get back till um, Sunday morning and I wanted to go see it because it was on my Instagram feed so much and it was over. So 
hopefully we can encourage whoever is doing it to redo it again. Um, all right. We don't have a council, now we have staff. I would just say that it's our public art staff that did um, the, the code art and the same um, group that is um, doing the, the residency on King Plaza. I'd also encourage you to go on the Art Center's um, website to look at the exhibit information for the art of disability. Um, art Center Director Karen Kinzel did come to the HRC um, within the last year to tell us about it. And I know I sent an email about that a couple of weeks ago, but encourage you to go see that. I really don't have anything else um, to report. Oh. I, yes, Commissioner. I, I do want to thank you, Mika, for doing a lot of the work for the um, Life Moves and the grant. I mean- That's really, yeah. Thank you for the thanks that I would say that is really, um, um, I would say other staff in public works and the, the city manager's office, I'm, I'm definitely part of those conversations, but I right. defer to my, my, my colleagues and um, Life Moves who are really working really hard on this. But thank you. Because that's what I was going to say, the city council did vote to proceed with the um, yes. San Antonio. Um, but I do not have a question regarding that because I'm grateful that they're going to ask the city. Do you know if, because I was talking to them about um, parking for the RVs, because that's going to be a problem. Do you know if there's any discussion about? There are, there, that is an, an area of need that we are aware of. So that will be a, a conversation between, you know, life moves and city staff. So there is not um, a specific resolution to that, but that is something that we are aware of. Yeah, because I know, because I, I mean, I've been talking to life moves because that was the problem for the Mountain View problem. I mean, mm -hmm. the Mountain View. Um, Mm -hmm. So I was just curious. So yeah. you guys are discussing it's, it's with... on our radar. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Um, I am. So um, as a commission, we honor all face. So uh, our regular scheduled meeting in um, November would um, coincide with Diwali. So we. Veterans say it again. Day, actually. Veterans it coincides Day. with Veterans Day, but a week earlier would be Diwali. Okay, so sorry. It coincides with Veterans Day, and then we talked about doing it a week earlier, and I was like, you can't put it on anybody's holy day, which was Diwali. So we are going to end up meeting um, in the month of November later, November 18th. Um, that being said, um, that might actually be an in-person meeting in some, no, it won't be. Is it December? It, at this point, the direction is that um, in November, council will go back and commissioners were looking at um, January. And okay. um, so we're still getting more direction, but commissioners don't have to go back yet. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, wow. <coughs> I'm tired. Um, so we will be meeting on the 18th. Is that the correct date? We'll be meeting on the 18th. Um, since this is the vice chair's first time, I, I will meet with her and staff to go over what agenda planning is and we will put an agenda together. Um, given that last year this time we were in the middle of a big report and we were meeting multiple times and we met through December because we had to present to the uh, the council in January. And we've had two rounds of his wrap this year and there's been a lot of sacrifice of time because people have been really busy. I am tentatively proposing that we can either do a, a holiday get together, um, celebrate the year or not have a meeting in December. But I will leave, but I will leave that, prop, that proposal up to you guys. So I'll be bringing that to you next month. My, my hope is we do a nice get together and just relax because we've, we've accomplished a lot. We've done a lot of good work and there's nothing pressing that we need to push through. Um, are there any other comments, questions, concerns? All right, HRC, you, you guys elected somebody. You guys talked about housing and we had a very informative report on PD and we did it all in 
one hour and 21 minutes. I think that's a new record, Minka. I think that's a new record. So um, I want everybody to have a good week. Uh, I will see you on November the 18th. And thank you all for your service. Thank you. <laughs>